Hello. Today, we are out again, very close to Plaza de Armas. And we are going to go to this little building right here on the corner. Over there is the Museo Chileno de Arte Pre-Colombiano. Chilean Museum Pre-Columbian Art. Talking a lot about Chilean culture and history so far. I stay here in Santiago. And a lot of it's been like, you know, post post Columbus. Spanish after the Spanish came here, 1541, and made it into a Spanish colony. But there's a lot of culture and history. Before that, uh, this was a large Incan settlement before uh, before the Spanish arrived. And there have been people here for many, many centuries before that even. So Let's go across here into this building and check out some pre-Columbian art. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. Okay, we got our ticket, we're inside. It's 10,000 pesos for a uh, tourist, for a foreign tourist, so it's about 11, 12 dollars. It's a nice little uh, atrium area in here, gift shop, and a little cafe. And now we can head inside. This looks like multiple halls. Chile, antes de Chile, Chile before Chile. America, Precolombiana. And a courtyard with temporary exhibitions, access to the library. I don't think we're gonna go to the library and the offices. Okay, so hmm. let's go down. We'll go down first. We'll go down. We'll see Chile antes de Chile, and then we'll go up and see America pre Colombiana. The staircase to get down to Chile antes de Chile is very spooky. It seems to go down forever. Where are they leading us? Here we are. Chile, antes de Chile. I'm gonna talk while we're down here, but I'm gonna talk quietly because I don't wanna bother other people that are here. Timeline of pre-Columbian cultures. Oh, and of course, different zones. Chile, very, very large, north-south, very long country. Starting, starting at 12,500 years BC or AC. And only here, only here do we see the Inca, the Mapuche, and some of the Quechua some of the people that we've been talking about, but I mean, look at the history before. That's just in 1500 AD. Very, very long history. People have been settled here for almost 15,000 years. So this is, just FYI for all the English speaking viewers, DC is Después de Cristo, so it's A.D. Ceramics, around 1000 A.D. The El Bato and the Giorgiano, first groups to make ceramics in the central zone. Central zone, that's where we are. Santiago. Around 300 AD, the Pitran Horticultural Gatherer Society culture. They are the first to make ceramics in southern Chile. This is from southern Chile. Altar de Machi. Machi's sacred altar, the Mapuche. This is from 1700. Of 
course, there was quite a long time, decently long time period of time when the Spanish and the indigenous people who were here before the Spanish were uh, coexisting in the same places, same time periods. So these statues would have been on top of tombs in Mapuche cemeteries. Carved out of wood. Yeah, this is Zona Sur, southern zone of Chile. And that's basically what it looks like down there. I mean, look at it. Really beautiful. The land of lakes and forests. We're not going to get to go down there this trip, unfortunately, but one of these days, one of these days we'll have to come back to Chile, head down south and see all that stuff. I have to do the same in Argentina. There's a lot of stuff to see. Mapuche equestrian culture and textile art. Oh, so this was like blankets and things they would put on their horses. This is really amazing. The coloring. Of course, you know, they would have to like, they would dye all of this. Is this wool? Or maybe like llama wool? Now horses, if I'm getting it right, I think horses didn't exist here on the, in, yeah. um, in the Americas until they came over with the Europeans. And, you know, like it says here in the sign, that the horse transformed Mapuche society, increasing mobility, becoming primary combat weapon and trade good. That makes sense. Really incredible silver work. Actual, actual Mapuche woman wearing this silver, or at least this kind of silver. Wow. It's pretty incredible. And there's still people who speak, who are Mapuche in Chile today. There are people that speak Mapuche. People that speak Quechua. I mean, not very many. A lot of the old indigenous languages are dying off because there's just not anybody to speak them. Same thing in Argentina too, all across like South America and Latin America. North America too. Hmm. Polished stones. Tokikuras. Tokikuras. They convey the authority of the holder based on size and shape. So it's like a like a crest, almost. Ah, uh, Rapa Nui. This is the Easter Island. Rapa Nui culture peaked. AD 1000. That's when the large, famous Easter Island statues were erected. These are Inca. Yeah. Inca from 1400 to 1536. The Incan Empire stretched from like Cusco, which would have been the center of it in southern Peru, all the way down here. Only recently has there really been studies and uh, evidence to show that the Incans were all the way down here and that Santiago was probably an Incan settlement long before the Spanish arrived. These ceramics, some of them are so cool. And they're really, really well preserved too. I mean like, look at this thing. Look at how well preserved this is. Yo. Can you imagine? You just like kill a jaguar out in the jungle and turn his skin into your hood. That's some badass shit. Psychoactive snuff. Hallucinogenic snuff kits. Let's go. Damn. Out 
there killing jaguars, wearing their skin as hoods, and getting getting effed up on hallucinogenic snuff. All right. Okay. Okay. I I see you. Chile is far north. Of the shamans. Okay, so that's how they that's how they do it in the north. Wow. Look at these. What are these? Uh, Instrumento de contabilidad. Not in courts for our accounting. Hmm. I mean, without a calculator, how else are you going to do math? This is how you're going to do it on this thing. Incan knots. The Incan state used cupis or knotted cords to keep their accounts. Data was stored in the quantity, type, and position of knots on the primary and secondary cords strung together. <laughs> Largest kipu in this display is 586 cords, organized into eight sections of 10 sets. Each of the 13 sub-levels of information. Overall, the kipu holds one, no, 15,024 items of data. Whew. For all you spreadsheet warriors out there, before there were spreadsheets, that's how you did it. Symbol of the leaders. So this is like a staff that the chief would carry. This is this is big time. This is amazing silversmithing. Look at that. Jeez. Look at this one with the beads. Holy cow. It's a glass beaded silver crucifix. Once again, Spanish, Spanish Catholics and uh, the indigenous people, they lived together for a long time, not exclusive. Look at how complex the design is, the weaving. It says you're in the northern region of Chile, your hat would be like a symbol of who you were, like what your status was. Your status, membership in like particular ethnic group. Wow, these are cool. This one, look at this. Again, the like super intricate, hand woven. I mean, can you imagine making that? Jeez. It's incredible. Looks like there's a temporary exhibition over here. Fractures and repairs. Let's go check it out. And inside the temporary exhibition, we have the entire place to ourselves. Oh well, more or less. Just forget that guy that just walked in. Oh, these are cool. This one. This one's made with like feathers. Very cool. Uh, poncho here. This is really cool. Look at this. The weaving on it is so, so intricate. The patterns, and it's like super long too. Look, it's all rolled up. Incredible. How many think it takes to make one of those things? More ceramics. These are really incredible. I mean, you know, like I said, of course, you see the ones that are in like really, really good condition downstairs, but these, I mean, these are the broken ones on purpose. This is the whole point of the exhibition. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, this is really cool. Look at this piece. So they took, these are all like different, it's hard to see, it might be hard to see in the video, but these are different pieces. They're all different, so they're not like from one broken, they're like little pieces all from different um, ceramics. And they pasted them all on top of this like translucent 
I don't know, I don't even know what it is, plastic or, well, it's translucent fiberglass maybe, so that they can put a light inside. Jeez, I think it's so cool. I like this because this is like modern art, but it's made with pieces of ancient art. It's a very cool idea. That was a cool exhibit. It was small. There wasn't very much in there, but I mean, it was very cool to see. And I do like how they had that. My, my favorite piece was that glowing, like, modern art pottery that was made with the fragments of the other pottery. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, it's cool we had the whole place to ourselves. The only other people in there were, like, the docents. Honestly, anytime I'm in a place in a museum, where it's like super, super quiet, and it's just me and like the docents, I get super nervous about talking because it's like, I don't know, if there's a few other people walking around, they're paying attention to other stuff, I can talk like quietly, but man, if it's just like me and like three or four docents like it wasn't there, and they're all just sort of sitting there like looking at me while I walk around talking to myself like an idiot, I don't know, I get nervous about that. Anyway. Let's go upstairs and see the rest of this stuff. From the Aria Intermedia, and this is from the culture Hamakuake. Are these drinking? Cups. Musico y Guerrero. Music and warfare. Huh. These things are incredible. Stones, stone sculpture. This is from like before. 500 AD. So this is Prima Puce. Clava, Clava de Piedra, stone axe, the symbolic. It says the Spanish observed Mapuche holding these as like a status symbol. That you were like very important chief, elder of some sort. This is supposed to be a jaguar. It's a pretty chunky little jaguar, but... It's a jaguar nonetheless. These are all up from like... Vicos, Sican, Moche, Nazca... In the central Andes, that's like in Peru. Modern day, but this is all... Pre-Incan. Copper mask. Again, like incredibly well preserved. It's amazing how well preserved they are. Ooh. Look at this thing. Feline man. Wow. Jeez, look at this. This thing's incredible. This originally located in one of the main Aguateca plazas in the southern lowlands of Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula. Man, I gotta go <laughs> one of these days. One of these days I'm gonna go up to like the Yucatan area. Central America, Guatemala, Mexico. We're gonna check it out. One of these days. This one is creepy. Here we go. These are musical instruments. At least these two are. Pilolio, Piloilo. Prima Puce, Piloilo. And a flute. Some little pipes for smoking 
Well, I don't know. Who knows what they were smoking back then? Could have been smoking anything. I mean, they were getting pretty crazy. Snorting uh, psychedelic snuff and hallucinating while wearing Jaguar pelts as hoods. These are Andes Centrales. So this is like up in, up around Peru. Peru. I want to visit Peru one of these days. I mean, pretty much all these places I want to visit one of these days. So far I've only been to Argentina, three cities, and here in Santiago. I think that one's my favorite of all of these. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's so cool. It's incredible. Look at this. Holding like a smaller one. That's incredible. Mono, monkey bottle. It's a pretty nice monkey bottle. This, this is gold. This is another reason why the Spanish decided to come here. All the stories, all the stories of the land of gold. Right, the myth of El Dorado. They weren't really myths. There was a lot of gold here. <laughs> that was true. Wow, look at this one in the middle. It's really cool. There's another musical instrument. Ocarina. Oh, and here's... See, this is that musical instrument that we saw. This is a vase of someone playing that musical instrument. That's really cool. Cusco, the Inca, like the uh, center of the Incan Empire. There's Lima. And the Inca, you know, like I said, you think of it as being really ancient, but I mean, they, they were the last of them, basically. These are all copper. This one here is nuts. Look at that. So intricate, so many pieces, like multiple, multiple pieces, all those little pieces. Really cool. Pre-Columbian textiles. Can you imagine weaving this entire thing? Look at the size of it. Incredible. This this is I mean look, the metallurgy is incredible, the ceramics also incredible, but like look at this thing. Imagine hand weaving something like this. Not only that, but you have to dye all the the thread. You have to make the thread yourself. I guess, you know, actually, now that you think about it, they probably weren't making the thread themselves. The civilization that's this complex, that's able to make something like this, you have people that are specializing in making the thread, people that are specializing in dyeing things, people that are specializing in weaving the end product. I mean, it's the only reason, it's the only way I can think that you get something like this. Civilization. Incredible. Even more incredible, clothing woven with feathers. Look at this.
Unbelievable. These are incredible. I wish I could provide better commentary for all of this, but like, <laughs> it just sort of blows my mind. I, I can't think of anything better to say other than like, wow, oh wow, oh this is amazing, this is incredible. Plates and funeral urns. Ooh, this one. That's incredible. See, there I go again. That's incredible. Well, it is. I'm not lying. This stuff really is incredible. Wooden carved spatulas. Oh, not the kind of spatula we're thinking of. A spatula vomica. Shamans. Yeah, okay, so they would uh, inhale psychoactive powders, those uh, psychoactive snuff that we were talking about before. This is Taino, Taino culture, right? In what is today, current day, uh, Cuba and Jamaica and Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. You like my map knowledge? That's right, I know where things are. I'm not one of those Americans. I know where things are. Uh, they would in inhale the psychoactive powders sitting on their stools, like this stool, and then they would put the spatula down their throat and throw up to receive the sacred... Oh, no, okay, so they... <laughs> They would throw up to purge their stomach so that the powder was like the only thing in there. Whew. Okay. Yeah, and then they'd hallucinate, hallucinate, freak out. The Cahoba ritual aimed to help its practitioners to contact the deities diagnose illnesses, predict the future. I mean, if you shoved that thing down my throat and made me puke, and then I ingested a bunch of hallucinogenic stuff, I'd probably think I could predict the future too. Mesoamerica. So here, we're talking about Mexico. The Guard. Ceramic statues. Tombs. So are these, would these be things that were found in tombs? Hold on, shaft and chamber tombs, characteristic of Mexico's west coast. Dug in hard volcanic ash, clay soil. In some cases they're up to 18 meters deep, wow. Connect to five different mortuary chambers. After placing the body inside the mortuary chamber, the pit was filled with loose and fine earth so it could be reopened when they needed to bury another person. Are these? Yeah, okay, so Maya. Maya, that's like southern Mexico and Central America, Guatemala, that area, Honduras. Teotihuacan, place of the gods, located next to the now disappeared Lake Texcoco. Teotihuacan is at its height the world's most populated city with more than 100,000 inhabitants. Hundred thousand people. I 
That's a big city for 300, 300, the year 300, the year, you know, 900. 100,000 people is a lot of people. The way this museum is set up is really interesting. There's like this walkway around here where you can see like the backs of some of these pieces, but in there there's another room. And you can go into that room and see like the front of everything. It's an interesting setup. But it is cool because it allows you to see the back of these things, which in most museums you don't get to see, unless it's like something that's in the center of a room and you can walk 360 degrees around it. Being able to come through here on the back side and see the backs of things. Wow, look at this. It's incredible ceramic. Look at the carving. It's so intricate. There's like a maze carved on that. Ecuador, though, is included in here. That's another place I love to go. These are incredible. These carvings are really cool. Wow, look at this one. Yo! Cabeza de Murciélago. Murciélago means bat. It's a bat head. This is, oh, this one. This one's incredible. Look at that. The carving of like the feathers or whatever this is that, of what they're wearing. I mean, this is incredible. I've used the word incredible far too many times in this video already. Well, too bad. This stuff is incredible. And if you were here, you'd be thinking the same thing. I suppose you kind of are here because you're watching this video. So do you think it's incredible? If you do, let me know in the comments. These are from like the northern part of Ecuador. Coquero. See? <laughs> you see in their cheek? There's like a bulge. That dude's chewing coca leaves. These are these are sculptures of people chewing coca leaves. Which they still do in Ecuador, actually. Ecuador, Bolivia, Peru. People chew coca leaves because of the elevation. You get up that high, you get elevation sickness. And people chew coca leaves and they drink coca tea to uh, like help alleviate the elevation sickness. It's pretty crazy. So America. So now we're on the inside. We had walked around outside and seen all the things. So this is Costa Rica, Central America. I guess they're counting it as Mesoamerica though. Either way, this is from Costa Rica. Current current day Costa Rica. Another place I'd like to go. Yo, this one is creepy. What is going on with the hands and the feet? We're gonna have to learn more about this. Figures of a god, man, and a goddess dressed in the flayed skins of a man and a woman. Okay, so... <laughs> the reason that they have multiple hands and feet because they're wearing someone else's skin. That is intense. So this is like southern Mexico. There's Ciudad de Mexico. Veracruz. And now we're down into like Maya. And here you have the people. And the Aztecs, of course, who you know from like Mexico, in that area, very recent, same with the Maya, very recent. 
man, Mexico. Gotta go to Mexico one of these days. Mexico's another place where I feel like you could spend your entire lifetime there and not see everything there is to see. Whoa, look at this guy. Look at the feathers carved. Like, <laughs> look at how, the, the amazing thing about this one is it's very small. So the carving like is super intricate because it's so small. The feathers, the carving on his face. Nuts. Topa de incensario, so can ceramic incense burner, I guess? It would burn incense on this thing? Man, this is super intricate. Look, there's like either metal or gemstones like in set into it. Incredible. There it is again, I said it. This one has like little wheels. Figura Zmorfa Rodante. Altura Veracruz. Alright, now this thing. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, but you know what I'm thinking. Pedestal de Enzanzario. I don't even have to say it. All right, that place was awesome. That place was really awesome. That was definitely worth it. Like, a lot of the museums that we go to, we try to find free and or very cheap museums. And like when we were in Argentina, for example, there were a lot of free and very cheap museums in Argentina. Like uh, the... Uh, the uh, museum, the Museo de uh, Che Guevara, we went to Che Guevara's house, that was like 500 pesos, like 50 cents to get into that museum. This one, more expensive. Everything in Chile is a little bit more expensive than, uh, than it is in Argentina. Uh, but that one, I think is about 12, 11, 12 bucks. 100% worth it, 100% worth it. Gotta go check it out if you're here in Santiago. And uh, interestingly, Seems like it's right next to the uh, the Tribunales de Justicia building, which I think is like the the uh, court. Uh, I'm thinking this is like the the Supreme Court of Chile, the highest court in the land. That would just be my guess based on the name, Tribunales de Justicia. That is a very cool building right next door. Anyway, we're already getting sidetracked. Look, that uh, pre-Columbian art museum. Look, if you are here in Santiago and you have 11 or 12 dollars burning a hole in your pocket and you really want to see something incredible. I said it again, incredible. You gotta go to that place. That was wild. I mean, I knew we were gonna see like some cool stuff in there, right? Pre-Columbian art. And I definitely wanted to see stuff like that because like I said at the beginning of the video, we've been doing a lot of, you know, looking at history and, you know, art and whatnot, but it's all been Spanish stuff, right? Spanish colonial history, War of Independence, history of, like, Chilean Republic, that kind of history. It's all pretty modern history. That stuff, that stuff's really cool. Come check it out. And remember, when, you, when you're looking at stuff like that, it helps you remember, like, that, uh, Chile, even though it's very, uh, you know, everybody's speaking Spanish, and it's a uh, former Spanish colony, that there were people here, you know, way before then, and they weren't even the first empire, the Spanish, to, you know, be holding court here. And not only that, but you see those timelines, you think about, like, the Inca here, before the Spanish, right, the Spanish arrive, and the Inca are here. Spanish, they conquer the Inca, they take over and they put their city down, build a church, right? First thing they do, build a church. 
but I mean, the Inca on those timelines, the Inca are like at the very, very end of the timeline. And there's so many other people behind, like further back in time. It's really wild. It's really wild to think about that. How long people have been living here and how long there have been settlements here and like civilizations too. So yeah, come here. Come here to this museum. It's right here, it's like one block off of Plaza de Armas. There it is right there with the pink banner in front. It's like one block off of Plaza de Armas. If you're here at Plaza de Armas, come by here and see it. Help remind you that uh, the history of Santiago goes way back. It's much, much older than just the Spanish. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. What else is there to say about that? Nothing really. I think that's going to be the end of the video. We've seen definitely all we want to see in there. And uh, not much more else to say. It was a good video, I think. And if you enjoyed it, of course, you know, like and subscribe. I think that's going to be it, though. That'll be it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.